There. Now what do you think of that in turn? Now I know some of my colleagues may tease me for being as much of a lawnscaper and, and plant lover as I am a zookeeper, but they're all tied together if you ask me. You want to be able to nurture both the land and the animals in it in order to have a healthy ecosystem for everyone involved. And I think that this particular little ecosystem is absolutely perfectly suited for our little rabbit. We just need to add some of its food, and other than that, it's going to be good to go. In fact, I think we have some of its food down already. We'll, we need to go inside and check. Oh, this place is just filling in. I knew it would be better once you got here, in turn. Somehow, you just always inspire me to add new things, try out new boundaries, push and see what we can add in in the weirdest little places. All right, now, I know that this, this gate... This gate... Oh, good, Princess is pregnant. That's wonderful. Hmm, well, this gate... Apparently, we can't get in this gate. Oh, dear. All right, intern. It's this again. I just got over my headache from having to deal with this nonsense. Eh. Okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. So far, so good. All right, let's see if it functions. If it functions, we leave it alone. Oh, it functions, thank goodness. All right, good. But yes, this is the little area for some matron rabbits. I'm pretty excited. There's a lot of bromeliads. I'm very excited about the bromeliads. Aren't they just beautiful? I have I have a bit of a passion for ferns and bromeliads and mosses. I don't really know why. They're just things that I love. But I plan on adding a lot of those suckers into our aviary once we get a couple of our aviaries going. Oh, and look at these. Some little monsoon grass for the bun bun to jump through. It's a very small rabbit. And oh, I even added in. I know this was a little silly of me, but I couldn't help myself when I saw it in the catalog. The beautiful Victoria lily pad. Isn't it huge? You and I could probably sit in there, but we'd go straight into the water and get our underwear filled with leeches yet again. Because this is uh, enough to hold the weight of usually like a three three-year-old mm, yeah about a three-year-old child it can usually support that weight but these lily pads can't support adult weight i think the little bun buns will be able to use it as like hopping stones though so that's why i added it in so they can go boink 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 off to the other side oh so fun but yeah mostly a lot of grasses a lot of these beautiful fern things oh they're just gorgeous yep there's its lettuce so we do have quite a few different pieces of grass just kind of scattered out here. Uh, the architects made me add in these little pillars. Somehow they said that it would uh, keep the ground stabilized, though I'm not entirely sure how. <gasps> Look at the bird of paradise. Isn't it just gorgeous? I have such a soft spot for the bird of paradise. I only added in a couple though. I restrained myself. But that being said, let us add in our little bun buns and see how they like their enclosure. Hopefully they won't attempt to uh, escape because that would be a little bit of a headache. We would definitely have to track them down. Now let's see, little bun bun. I want those two cans. I really, really want those two cans. All right, bun bun, where are you? It is a very small little rabbit, by the way, intern. And I found out through research that the reason it doesn't have a conservation group, since a lot of the endangered species, you would think, oh, that species, it's going to be okay even if it's really low in numbers because there's groups dedicated to preserving it. That may be the case for some of the big things like pandas, but a lot of other species get overlooked. And this rabbit actually had a whole conservation plan drawn up for it, but they weren't actually able to get the funds for it because in order to conserve the rabbit, you have to at least show that you have a population to protect. And this rabbit is so rare and hard to find in this tiny little mountain range on a tiny island. Well, it's not that tiny of an island, but like on this tiny little portion of a mountain range that they couldn't find enough rabbits in order to make the conservation uh, efforts go through because they couldn't prove that there was enough of a population left. So the breeding that they get into is going to be absolutely vital. Hopefully they will live up to their uh, breeding like rabbits reputation. And being able to get our hands on two breeding pairs is absolutely groundbreaking. This should really, really help out. There you go, little bun buns. They're slightly, they're slightly traumatized, I think. Woo, we're in the water. Hello. Careful for the lily pads. How you guys doing? They're thinking about things. I think we better leave them alone for a little bit. See if they, uh, see if they unwind. There you go, little girl. There you go. Can I get a good look at you? Can I get a good look at you? Okay, let's go down inside. I think the guests like it when we make these little gated exhibits too. Or gated? Bridged exhibits. Oh, they're off! They're moving and grooving! 
Oh, wow, look at their adorable little stripes. <gasps> oh my goodness. Aren't you just a cutie patootie? Oh my goodness gracious. Where are the others? There's the male. Oh, he's off. They're using the lily pads, that's for sure. There's the male and the female. Nibbling, jumping. Oh, you're so cute. Look at her with her little stripes. Jumping through the water. Look at him. Marking his territory, thanks. I'm sure that's what everyone wants to see, you handsome little rabbit. Oh, they're so cute. <gasps> Look at them. Look at them hopping around. Oh, wow, the females. I really like the coat on the females. I have to admit, that's what I'm a little fond of. Oh, they're so fast. They don't waste any time. They're just zipping around. Oh, 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 little girl. Little girl, you're under our feet. Oh, she's happy. She's a-jumping. Look at her run up and down. Oh, my gosh. This is actually, like, the best, the best thing in the world. I could probably watch these guys all day. They're so cute. Are you gonna hold still for a second? Yeah. Oh, speaking of photography challenges, we actually have a photography challenge that our bosses gave us that we need to take uh, take advantage of. What you doing, little girl? Being in the water? That's fine. That's totally fine. It's hard to get a good picture of them because they move so fast. Hey, you wanna come out of there? I see you. You're not an aquatic bunny. You're not an aquatic bunny. Silly goose goose. Man, they are just busy marking and doing silly silly bunny things. So we'll leave them be, but I'm glad to know that they're adjusting pretty well. Eating the branches like mad. Hello, zookeeper. Coming in to see the bunnies. Ah, there we go. Whew. And that gives our guests another wonderful area of our zoo to be able to admire. Oh, look at this. See? They're admiring! These are very, very rare bun buns, so the fact that we managed to get our hands on them says a lot about the quality of our zoo. Let's see if anyone will donate a wee bit of money, and then let's see if we can snag. Can people not sit on these tables? Because I've only seen like a couple of people use them, but I'm pretty sure they can sit on these tables. We'll have to figure it out. Oh, look at them! Using the binoculars! That's fantastic! Using the binoculars so that they can look in see what's going on in our panda exhibit. That's fantastic. I'm so happy. Everybody seems pretty happy. Can we fit a bench over here? Is there room for a bench? I think there's room for a bench. Oh yeah, look at that. Perfect. Now people can sit here. They can donate some money. Wow, that kid donated like 76 bucks. Thank you so much. You'd like to buy a gift? Oh, we can help you out with that. In fact, let's guide her down. In fact, let's move Let's move this gift cart now that we've got more of the island creatures. The island creatures? Is she headed there? She wants to buy a gift. We're gonna take her down here. Still wants to buy a gift. Maybe? Perhaps? You gonna go buy a gift? Nope. I think she's going to the, the fountain. Where are you going, sir? I'd like to buy a gift. Yep, she threw a little thing in the fountain. I think we need to move the island gift cart, which we need a fun name for, by the way, in turn. Coconut stand. Okay, he's in line. Cannot reach insects too close, too close to the house, huh? I put the insects too close to our little raccoon house, so let's put them over there. Maybe I did put a few mini trees in our raccoon exhibit, but that's okay. What'd he buy? I feel like taking a tour of this zoo. Aw, oh, he bought a raccoon mask. He's not wearing it, though. That would have been too awesome. Are you going to buy a gift? Ooh, he is going to buy the gift, even though he's hungry and parched and cranky. It's not my fault, sir. We have somewhere you can get, like, drinks right here. Oh, wow. That's filling up pretty fast. That was a smart move on our part, in turn. Maybe we should make a companion eating area over here. Speaking of eating areas for our guests, do we have access yet to restaurants? Because that is an important part of feeding and watering and pottying our guests. In many ways, they are just like our animals. On how we have to tend to them, and take care of them. Ooh, where's the insect house? Let's, let's put a little research into the insect house. That would be awesome to have. And then, animal photo booth. Gift cart. Gift stand. Gift shop. Carts, 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 carts. Stands, 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 stands. Moving, 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 moving. 
See, now I forgot what we were looking for, intern. It took too long. Ooh, look at that. Tropical background. Mmm, beautiful. It's green. Restaurants! That's what we were looking for, intern. I don't think we have enough yet for restaurants. Let's see. And descriptions. Nope, I'm not seeing restaurants. Man, getting stars from these people is like pulling teeth. Good grief. But we're going to move this island gift cart. Um, Let's put it right here. So it's kind of between the raccoons and the bunnies now. Whew. Well, now that that's done, we can start thinking about some other bits and pieces of adding to the zoo. Our orangutans are expecting, and that's very exciting, and I want to try to attract a little more attention to them. So I was thinking, to complement the fact that we have panda pandas over here, it is time to add our red pandas. And I can't decide if we want to do that over here or over here. And I think we'll do it over here, and then we'll put some sort of big cat or something over here. One of the more predatory species to kind of attract people. All right. Hopefully our money can hold out while we do all of this too, but I think it'll be okay. I can get back to dinosaur breeding if we need. So I'm thinking red pandas, and I'm thinking right here. And we'll leave a little area for an eating zone, which we can actually set up now, because this drink zone seems pretty popular. And people seem to have figured out that they can sit down here. Ooh, and the research for the insect house is complete. Oh man. I want to add a little random insect house somewhere. That would be so fun. It's kind of- oh yay! We went up a star! Yay! And our giant panda just grew up to an adult! That's fantastic! Going to Mark Sense. We'll have to get him a couple females, but that's going to be a lot of dinosaur cloning for me. So we'll get to that in just a little bit. Let's see. More famous. Our camel just grew up to an adult. That's wonderful. Uh, there's the insect house. Where should we put the insect house? Somewhere that doesn't have a lot of unique interest and a little bit to the side so if you're afraid of the insect house you don't have to look at the insect house hmm maybe we'll tuck it somewhere somewhere over here we'll get to that let's start by getting a little eatery area down and in fact let me see my list i think we are going to get the egg endangered salad bar going. So we'll get another salad bar kicking up over here since we can't have restaurants just yet. And let's see. Yeah, this should do it. This should do it. That looks good. We'll put a little bit of bamboo in the background here. A little bit over here. So that forms a nice little backdrop. We'll fill this in with bamboo. In fact, let's just get to where the bamboo's living. There we go. Lots of different types. See, I'm so excited. I knew once we got to this this zone, I would be absolutely over the moon because it meant that I got to work with all the bamboo and ferns I wanted. <laughs> and as you can guess, that happens to be a lot of bamboo and ferns. Look at all these new ferns. <gasps> new ferns, enter new ferns. Okay, we'll put down some of the old ferns because these are beautiful. I love the diversity. I love the way some of them have the little fern fronds. Did you know, intern, that ferns reproduce through both, I think it's like through spore genesis and through sexual reproduction. Trust me, I had to rememorize that and it was one of the most complicated things for some odd reason. It just turned out to be one of the most complicated lessons I ever had in university was having to meticulously draw out repeatedly the different ways that ferns uh, reproduce and it just didn't click that easily. I mean, now that I'm really into it, I, I enjoy it, but I think that my professor just had a very long-winded way of explaining it at the time. So it was a little bit of a pain in the butt to learn how ferns reproduce, <laughs> and I have never forgotten that, though, because it was so difficult. In fact, looking back on it, I can see that that particular gentleman would have thought the best way to teach students was to sometimes make things so difficult that it flummoxed you to the point that you never forgot it because it was so hard. <laughs> That would totally have been his personality. All right, let's see. Let's whip out a little yummy eating spot for our lovely guest. In fact, let's see. Do, 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 do. What should we put? A sugarcane stand? They do sell sugarcane, but that's more like that's more like something for the kidlets. But man, that looks good. Ah, oh, I am so biased to anything green. 
So we might put a little sugarcane stand in here for people to eat, but I think that the egg dangered egg salad bar would be a better choice. It's much better for you. And it sells other things in case you don't like salad. Who wouldn't like salad? It's beautiful leafy greens. Egg dangered salad bar. There we go. We're gonna set the prices to low so that you can get your sushi salad and everything else at a nice low price. Because we try to be accommodating. In fact, we have a, uh, I think everything else is set to a pretty good low price too. Because we're trying to really encourage people to eat healthy, be healthy, walk the zoo. Though seriously, the size of our zoo, if you walk it, you're gonna be pretty darn healthy as it is. All right, there's that. Maybe we'll put down a couple little torches just to kind of spice things up a little bit. In fact, we'll do that over here too. Hope those torches don't catch that little fern on fire. Can't add it there because there's kind of a thing in the way. So we'll just leave that alone. <laughs> All right, that's much better. So now our guests will have somewhere to eat right here. A little munchy crunchy stuff. I hope they can get there. Hopefully this pillar won't, won't obstruct them. Are you headed out, little girl? Oh no, she's just going to go toss a coin into the fountain. It's kind of funny how like guests have their favorite fountains, but I guess people are just that unique, unique and interesting. So let's see what our red panda would need. Do 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 do. Whew. All right, let's take it out from our gigantic catalog. Oh, isn't it just so wonderful that we have this many amazing animals that we have the opportunity to work with? All right, tropical rainforest. And I think it would be in here. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not seeing it. You know what, in turn, we're just going to do it the old-fashioned way. And while we're digging through everything, we can look at what other animals are available. Let's see. Stable antelope. Probably going in the safari zone. The Hamid let's see, Hamadryas baboon, semi-desert, so it would go into the safari zone. There's the European badger, that's going to go in the forest zone. The basilisk. This is a South American jungle animal, but we might redo this as just like a jungle area and work there. The speckled bear, speckled bear, okay. This one, native to the alpines of South America, let's see. The beta fish. I do love beta fish. Um, I have been told that they're not in the the oceans, like the the ocean. That's that's salt water. That definitely isn't where you find beta fish. You find them in uh, like the rice paddies and kind of marshy wetland areas of some Asian countries. So we could add some beta fish in here. The bison, that would be more of a grasslands animal, so we'll have to think about that. I've been thinking about doing more of a grasslands area with the cows and the asses and the horses and uh, some of your, like, chickens. Definitely the chickens. Lots and lots of chickens. Some of your more traditional, like, uh, grassland, openland animals. Like the caribou, perhaps. Caribou could go there because it's more of a tundra animal, so grassland tundra. Ooh, the cassowary. I want to add this puppy in for sure. Absolute killer, the cassowary. Oh yeah, we're looking for red pandas. I got distracted. <laughs> Sorry, intern. All right, digging, digging, digging. Spotted cuscus. Really cute looking. Eucalyptus forest. We might add that little one in. But for now, it's red pandas. Red pandas. Might do a few. For example, like the river dolphin. Since this one's more like a hot desert river dolphin, probably the safari zone. But thinking about adding that one in too. Oh yeah, the zebra di diker. We'll have to add that guy in soon too. Definitely the Asian elephant. We're gonna have lots of room for that one. Let's see. Red panda, red panda. Oh, definitely adding in some tree frogs. I love tree frogs. I really, I just do. In fact, I should probably look into finding a tree frog. There's always rescues that take in um, exotic animals that people just weren't prepared for, and that's actually where I get most of my pets. A scarlet ibis. <sighs> so beautiful. This is one of my favorite birds of all time. I have a weakness for that one too. Oh my goodness, intern. Well, if you see things like the green tree kangaroo, and I know we have some koala, some shipments of koala coming to us pretty soon. Or the kangaroo itself. See, the kangaroo is a good example of like, where the heck do I put a kangaroo? It doesn't really go in the Asian forest area. And that's why I was thinking maybe we would have an island area and we'll put a whole bunch of different islands that guests can walk to on bridges. 
uh, inn, and the Komodo dragon could be there. Maybe the koala will go over there. I have to think about that. If we want to put the koala in here or in the island exhibits. I think the island exhibits would be a better spot for it. The adorable lemming, which we will be adding in. The ringtail lemur. That's another one. See, some of these are islands, but some of them I could see here. So we won't be too finicky. We'll just kind of go with our gut on where we want to send things. Good gracious, where is it? Okay, going, going, going. Squirrel monkey. That's one I could see us adding in. The squirrel monkey. We already have some Gila monsters. Some moray eels would be really nice to have a beautiful little walkthrough area of moray eels and other fish. And the island exhibit. The ulm is going into the forest exhibit. The, the okapai needs to go in this zone. So we'll add a few of those guys in too. There's my red panda! Oh, I knew you were around here somewhere. There you are, cutie. Woo! Alright, well now that we found it, intern, and now that we know how much it is, which is quite a bit, let's see, a little temperate forest. So this is a temperate forest animal you're telling me? Let's do a little research real fast. Common name for raccoon-like animals, similar in size to a large cat with thick reddish-brown fur. The red panda has pointed ears, stout limbs, and the heel and the toe touches the ground. There's a word for that. If you ever want to know if there's a word for the way that a, a wing turns or a certain feather pattern, you can guarantee that biologists have come up with a word to describe it and in our attempts to better understand the natural world as well as to differentiate between different species. Trust me, I had to do a lot of vocab study. <laughs> oh my gosh. But so do you in turn, since you are a biology student as well. Lots of different interesting vocabulary words. We might start doing some pop quizzes so I can help you prepare for your exams. You'll be grateful, trust me. They are found in steep mountains in western China and the Tibetan Himalayas. They live in pairs and small groups in bamboo forests on which they feed. They are nocturnal, sleeping in trees during the day. Breeding takes place from January to March, and the young are born three to four, three to four months later. The litter may include one to four, but often two offspring. They, in the past, the red panda has been classified in the raccoon family and the bear family. More recently, scientists put the red panda in the family Arade or something like that, which separate, which is separate from both the raccoon and the bear family. Woo! Well, that's a little bit of a mouthful, but we're going to build a really nice little exhibit for this wee one. Probably... Mm, we'll stretch it out. I don't like the cube shapes of some exhibits. I like to, I like to kind of break it up like we did with these. So we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll give it a nice size exhibit, probably going this way, like over here maybe, and then tuck the insect area right here, and we'll think about adding in another, like like in an L shape. Yeah, yeah, that's what we'll do. Whew. Well, alright, in turn I'm going to go grab the bricks and then we can start putting down the fencing and preparing to have our red pandas join the zoo. Are you excited? <laughs> 